Hey folks, welcome back for more Let's Play Professor Layton, The Diabolical Box. I know I said we were going to skip this, but we can do one more right now. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Let's see, the next ingredient, I believe is one of these, and one of those, and one of these. And they will, you know, just make comments randomly as you continue. And it's a successful combination. Delicious! I just love how sweet this tea is, Professor. Well, it's a bit too sweet for me, but I understand why so many children enjoy it. I think I could drink a whole pot of this stuff myself. Just watch me. And after that big food bill you racked up in the restaurant, I believe it. <laughs> You've got quite the sweet tooth, Luke. Just try not to drink it too fast. I believe we can serve this. And I believe... Nope, we have to wait until he actually asks for it. But he will want a cup of that. And now notice that each, each specific tea blend we get has its own name. The first one was Bell Classic. The second one was Oasis Berry. So let's take a quick look here. And actually, I think, if I go here... No, maybe I have to exit out. I want to see if I can get him to actually... Come on, Luke. You know you want some tea. No, you don't want any tea. But let's see what happens if we get a wrong blend. Because you'll get a lot of those your first time playing. So let's make something that doesn't work. Two of those and one of those. And then they will have various, um, various comments. And the comments are all somewhat, you know, somewhat funny the first time you see them. But this tea smells a bit, well, funny. Are you sure we can drink this, Professor? Why not take a sip and find out for yourself? Ew, I think I'll pass on this one. Where did I go wrong? I was so sure I'd brewed something good, too. And yeah, if you make... If your uh, tea combination isn't a, one of the valid 12 choices, you'll get something along those lines, and they'll say it can be used for industrial varnish, or it should best be never spoken of again. Something like that. So eventually Luke will want some tea, and we'll feed him that, and he will become the second person. Now, we're pretty much done here, but for now, let's talk to her. Oh, hello there, you two. You sure have excellent timing. See, I'm trying to wrap these flowers I grew to give to a friend. I've got a green thumb when it comes to plants, but I'm all thumbs when it comes to wrapping. Help an old gal out, would you? Number 32. It's a wrap. Worth 20 points. In order to wrap the flower, just like in the leftmost drawing, how would you begin your wrapping? Tap A, B, or C to answer. Now, let's see, how would you begin that? Let's see, you would want this kind of on the outside edge, since you want that up there. And if you begin rolling that way... You'd want, okay, you would want the green on the part that didn't start curling. And you wouldn't want it to be upmost there. Visualizing A and D are out, so is it B or C? You'd want it done C. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Yeah, that one, the first time I did it, I had to actually get a piece of paper and draw it out. It doesn't work out too well that way. Well, that's about the finest wrapping job I've ever seen. You sure saved me a heap of trouble. And we've got our fourth hamster toy. Or is that our third? I think it's our third. 
I'll have to look again later. Now let me return the favor with a few helpful tidbits about that tea set I gave you. I'm sure you know the basics of brewing, yes? Putting in one scoop of the three ingredients I gave you makes a lovely Bell Classic tea. However, there's a lot of room for experimenting. For example, try brewing two parts brisk berry with one part something else. Get it right, you'll make a sweet, crisp tea that is just wonderful. And if you haven't picked up more tea ingredients, try creating some infusions of your own. There's a whole world of complex flavors waiting to be discovered. You just need to find them. So now, do you want some tea? No, you don't, do you? Okay, never mind. You're not going to do it for me, are you? Darn you. Nope. Darn you, Luke. You want tea. You're British. You have to love tea. Isn't that a requirement? I need to ask some British people if it is a requirement or not. No, huh? Fine. We'll go do something else. Yeah, that, okay, that is our fourth toy. Okay. We'll still need a few more. Ah, there, finally. Help. I'm exhausted. Could you make me some tea with an oa some oasis leaf and a double dose of brisk berry? You mean more? Luke drinks a steaming cup of Oasis Berry, enjoying each warm sip. Ah, oh, this tea sure hits the spot. It's sweet, and it's got me ready to start walking again. Now that's good tea. Luke seems restored and in high spirits. And we get another hint coin. Finally, you brat. Take your time and all that, but now two out of 26. Okay, we're done here for the moment, so let's walk back. And now, she should be out of the way, and we should be able to go this way. Look at all these booths! Now this is what I call a festival! Ooh, I just love all the hustle bustle. It's so wonderful! Shall we walk around and take in more of the sights then? Definitely! The Professor Luke and Flora decide to check out the plaza in front of the town hall. So, we got a few things we can do here. Oh, let's see, I believe one's here. Yes, it is. And then... There's number two. And there. There we go. Yay. Okay. And let's see... Over here, I believe. Yep, there's a hidden puzzle. Look at this monument here, Professor. It appears to be commemorating something. Why don't we take a closer look? Number 30, this secret message. Worth 30 points. On the day Dropstone was founded 50 years ago, the villagers toasted with red wine and danced late into the night. They also built this statue, engraving it with the word red and the date 812. Part of the statue is shaped like a wine glass and can be filled with water from the spout at the top. While the statue describes villagers' activities on the day of the founding, it can also show where they, found them, where they all found themselves the day after the festivities. Can you figure out where the villagers were? Answer in three letters. Oh, this is much easier than you'd think to figure out, because... Well, it can be very accurately used to describe where they were after having, you know, heavy festivities and drinking and all that. And simply put, if you fill up this basin, it acts like a mirror for everything below this line. So, the 8 would still look like an 8. The 1 would still look like a 1. The 2 would look like a 3. The R would suddenly look like a B. The E and D would be normal. So 813, they'd be in bed. Oh, 
I like that, folks. I see it won't let you do that when you enter in your name, but it'll let you do that out here. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Brilliant. There we go. See? You can just kind of see it reflected a little bit there. According to the writing here, this village was founded by its first settler 50 years ago. It's strange how 50 years is a long time for a person, but not much time at all for a village. Quite so. But this fact just invites more questions. Why did this founder come here in the first place? It's hard to believe he or she sensibly set forth from their old residence to found a new village. And it is kind of strange, but anyway, we have more people to talk to. Let's start with you. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Parting with one so dear to your heart is even more painful than the tightest wig. When she was a child, I used to read to her till she fell asleep. She looked just like an angel. Oh, nothing hurts so much as... <laughs> separation's knife. Gee, I don't know about that. I guess I've never really given it much thought. Oh, fret not. I wasn't expecting one as young as yourself to fully understand a pain such as mine. Don't mind me. I'll just excuse myself now. The way he was carrying on, you'd think he just got dumped. But he seemed sad in a different way, didn't he? Best not to pry too deeply into the private affairs of others, Luke. It's not becoming of a gentleman. And that... 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 I don't need to comment there, do I? No, no, I don't. You're right, Professor. And now we can talk to you. Hey, fellows. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Albert, and I am just nuts about our beautiful village. I've heard you've been running around Dropstone asking questions, but you haven't talked to me yet. If you solve this puzzle, the king of Dropstone trivia, yours truly, will answer a question for you. Number 53, Boys Club, worth 30 points. Below is the wheel of a male and female portraits. Select a portrait and, counting that portrait as one, move six portraits either clockwise or counterclockwise. Then, cross out the last of these six portraits. Repeat this pattern, starting from the next available portrait and moving in the same direction. If you start at just the right portrait, you can move all the women in the wheel, leaving only the six portraits of men behind. Circle this portrait. Remember, you can move either clockwise or counterclockwise. Now I could go back and forth, but it takes a goodly long time. So I will just, exp I will just say that this is the one you care about. If you start here, and then, you know, it takes it takes a while. And you want to go counterclockwise. But let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're getting rid of you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. No, wait. I am wrong, aren't I? I am wrong. Hmm. I know it's you. Mm -hmm. What did I do wrong? I know I did something wrong, but what was it? You know what? I'm going to pause the video for a second, and when I figure it out, I will come back. And now I feel like a moron. Because when I do it, you're supposed to count... That's that's what I was doing wrong. Yeah, I remember this puzzle being just this huge thorn in my side. Because I keep forgetting that counting that portrait is one. So yeah, if we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, 
Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. And conversely, I believe if you do it the other way, and if you do it just if you do it just right, you will end up and eliminate all the min you can eliminate the men's pictures too. I feel like an idiot. Oh well, can't be helped. Oh yes, I could. I could read the directions and all that. But anyway, so there you go. I could have gone back and forth for a while, but I would have been laboring under that one misconception about the puzzle. So yeah, I just remembered that that was the correct portrait to choose. And then couldn't figure out why I couldn't make it work. Oh well. Anyway, onward. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Yeah. My original playthrough, I didn't get through that on the first try. Expertly solved. Oh, it gave me chills. It really did. Okay, ask away. If you've got any questions about the Village Yord's history, I'm your man. Would you happen to know anything about a supposedly cursed antique called the Elysian Box? Hmm. It's hard to believe, but you've gone beyond my area of expertise. I've never heard of the thing. What I can tell you is that people in the town jump at the very mention of curses. From what I gather, it seems to have some connection to the village in the days of its founding. Unfortunately, that's all the info I can really give you on that subject. Sorry to let you down. So anyway, me being a complete and total idiot about a puzzle is a good stopping point for now. When we come back, we're going to head into this building. So, see you then, folks. Later all.